All right, so we're sitting in Brooklyn right now. Could you tell yes. us exactly where? Peace and blessings. I'll be the general still. We are sitting. We are we are by BAM. We are we are in a we're in the epicenter of Brooklyn uh, right now. This is uh, Flatbush Avenue, Lafayette. We are right by BAM, um, across from Mark Morris Dance Center. We are by the the cultural space of Brooklyn right now. Um, it's a lovely day. Yeah, it's very yeah, hot. Yeah, it's very, it's very hot, very steamy. But that's what Brooklyn do, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like two days ago, we were uh, walking with Master Ace and Marco Polo. Oh, uh, see? Yeah. yeah. Right, so they they not too far from where we at right now. Yeah, um, we were in Fort Green Park. Yeah, in Fort right. Green Park. Fort Green Park is a couple of walks mm -hmm. up, up, up there. Where you guys took the train to, Fort uh, Green Park is behind yeah. you on that side. So it's like... We, we, you know, we all, this is, yeah. and see, uh, this guy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Brooklyn is awesome, man. Come on, man. It's, it's the varieties, the, 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 the diversity. How could you not enjoy this place? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do you remember, actually, because I think that you were in the nostalgia video that they shot at Fort Green Park yes, yes. years ago. Do you remember that, that video? I do. I do remember that shoot. Um, I mean, Master Ace is family. Um, I grew up in Cephalo Projects. Master Ace grew up in Howard Projects, which is like a couple of meters from each other. And then we in the hip hop game. So like whatever he needed, I mean, that's on deck. And I mean, Smith & Wesson, uh, we, we, you know, whatever, wherever we can help our comrades, we dare ya. But mm -hmm. on another note, we just did a new video with him for his mm. new album. Oh, I probably hey. shouldn't be talking about this because <laughs> they. Secret, yes. he, I mean, they, you, you spoke to them already, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know about the new album coming yeah, out. Yeah, so yeah. we on. So we don't ever think about. All right, album. good. <laughs> so we on. Smith and Wesson is on the new album with Master Ace and Marco Polo. So whatever we do with family, we keep. We know we keep it. We keep mm -hmm. it 360. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, like we were talking before that uh, like Brooklyn is so diverse and there's so many different parts and neighborhoods that differ like amongst mm -hmm. each other and the place where we say uh, Gates and North Strand like we know that Biggie grew up nearby because yeah. we have Biggie's mural like a couple <laughs> like I don't two know minutes. Two, two, yeah. two minutes from our house right yes, but could sir. you tell us a little bit more about uh, our neighborhood right now where, where well we where, you, where you guys are staying at that's that's best style um, Fulton Avenue there's a lot of there's a lot of gangsters over there, um, and and when when you have gangsters in your neighborhood, that means your neighborhood is safe, because mm -hmm. the gangsters make sure there's no bullshit going on in the neighborhood. Um, big up to Junior Mafia, you know what I'm saying? Salute to the family, because um, the family is still out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Big City Bang. I just seen Big City Bang out there the other day. You know what I mean? Um, you know. It's a lot of it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of different things that's going on. What I what I love about that area the most is that the buildings, the limestones and the brownstones, like it just reminds you of 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 of, of the family. Mm -hmm. And then then the stores, it's almost like the mom and pop stores, you know, with the exception of a few McDonald's and mm -hmm. stuff like that, but. But the family, the family values are still there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, the brownstones, the brownstones is like one of the most classic images when you think of Absolutely. Brooklyn, right? This is this is why, you know, behind us is um, the stadium. We could take a walk to the stadium, the Barclays Stadium. Um, the stadium was done in the vein of of, of the brownstones. Uh, it's not it's not like your traditional stadium where. It's the silver and platinum thing. Mm -hmm. it, 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 lo it looks like a brownstone. And these guys went as far as putting grass on the top of the stadium, <laughs> which is like, all right, Brooklyn got a, it's like, a, it's, a, it's, it's always that, that vibe of, of home, mm -hmm. you know? So that's what I guess, you know, even when you talk about Spike Lee, Spike Lee, we walk this way, a couple of blocks, we're gonna go by Spike Lee's spot. 
Oh. You know what I mean? Wow. Laf we want Lafayette. So Lafayette, I mean, it's the epicenter. We right in the sm dead smack in the middle of wherever you want to go right mm -hmm. now. You know? So cultural richness. <laughs> And like when we entered the Fort Green with Mustaze and Marco Polo, they, they, were, they was like, oh, we shot nostalgia video right here mm -hmm. and we haven't been here since the shot. So they met in the park like after 12 years. Mm -hmm. And do you remember like some classic videos shot, shot right here? Um, well, where we're sitting at right now, this, this place where we're sitting at has just been built. So this is like a, a classic shot we are we are starting some new classic <laughs> stuff new. uh this place right here used to be a parking lot mm -hmm. this place where we're sitting at used to be they used to have concerts here mm -hmm. um this whole area from from here to back there this whole area was concerts uh I can't remember the name of the concerts, but we had BAM. So whoever's watching this, you're gonna you're gonna go, ah, that yes, right. So what happens with the with the whole gentrification thing is that we get moved to different areas, but we're still in Brooklyn. So instead of us having it here, like this was a parking lot, that was a parking lot, that was a parking lot. Um, if you if you lived in Brooklyn long enough, then you can appreciate the development. It might piss you off, maybe, perhaps. I, I like coming here. Guys used to skateboard and do all kind of stuff here, um, and they still do. As you look, if you if you spin it, we just seen this guy with his bike and all that stuff. Um, I've been in Brooklyn for the majority of my life, and I've seen videos shot all over this place Fulton Avenue uh, 3rd Avenue 4th Avenue Flatbush Avenue Lafayette Fort Greene Park um, everybody wants a picture of the, 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 the clock the Atlantic the, mm -hmm. the clock on Atlantic Atlantic Avenue yeah it's a lot of videos that that will um, will show you the, the history mm -hmm. you know yeah, and we and we spoke that uh, Brooklyn and New York uh, as a whole changed a lot, yeah. and also New York uh, hip hop changed a lot. Uh, but See. what do you think about today's uh, New York uh, hip hop condition? Because I feel like after the downs, it's like st started coming up, like uh, new new up and coming artists like a Boogie or Don Q, uh, mm -hmm. uh, getting more attention and uh, throwing more light at New York back again. I think that uh, for a minute. People were uh, disappointed with New York, and then they rem they remembered. Uh, even myself, I'm guilty of it as well. We remembered how how diverse New York was from the beginning. Um, you know, Harlem. It's like Nas said it. You know, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, Staten Island, like La Long Island. Um, each, each, each one of these places represents the five fingers, right? Now, each one of these fingers allow us to clinch the culture, you know? So when you look at it, it's like, it's no way, like, you think about uh, Chuck D, you think about L-O-N-S, they came from Long Island. You think about EPMD, they like straight from the boondock. That's Long Island, right? You think about Wu-Tang. These guys came from Staten Island. That's like the sixth borough, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of them guys, like Genius, came from Brooklyn. Ghostface, he from Staten Island. But ODB, a song, rest in peace, he a Brooklyn baby. When he say, Brooklyn, zoo, mm -hmm. right? So, okay. Now you go to Queens and you look at all these guys from Queens. F phenomenal artists from Queens. Then you go to the Bronx. Amazing artists from the Bronx. You know? Like how can we not keep keep this thing together? You know what I mean? So, I mean, as you get older, you start to understand it a little bit differently. 
Um, when you're young, you just running around, you know. So I can see uh, the younger guys out here, you know, they just they just they just taking their claim, they just putting their flag in the ground, and I respect that. And just make sure, you know, where you put your flag at, just make sure you love where you at, you know, and take care of your take care of your take care of your hood, take care of your community, and take care of the people that's there, because that's what that's what hip hop did for us, you know. So let's continue to do that, you know. Uh, and also an interesting topic is how like the whole Brooklyn has changed uh, like you mentioned and a lot of people have mentioned before as well mm -hmm. uh, but like when we think of the 90s uh, New York hip-hop mm -hmm. and, and the lyrics in those songs like uh, does it still ring true or has like and also um, there's an interesting aspect because a lot of MCs have said that for example some rappers over exaggerate things in their lyrics and but uh, like when when we are listening to classic New York albums from the 90s was it really like that bad how it sounds on those I, records I got one I got one I got one for you Sean Price said with rap you could tell such amazing tales let's not forget that we are creators we are telling stories you know sometimes we might exaggerate sometimes we'll give it straight raw to mm -hmm. you now if we get to a point where hip hop has to be the 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 the, the, the how you say uh, the dialect of everything real, that's unreal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, is jazz telling how how old people think? Is 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 folk music telling you how people with hard bottoms and crazy hats think? Like. It's just an expression of people, you know? And you can't, you can't hold rap responsible for, for people's lives. Mm -hmm. what, it does is it, it, what it does is expose um, how some people are living. And yeah, sometimes it's over glorified. Yes, absolutely. Sometimes these people talk about money they do not have. Sometimes they talk about uh, guns and a whole lot of different stuff. Um, and Again, going back to what Sean Price, one of our greats, said, with rap, you can tell such amazing tales. Like, the Canterbury stories. Is that real? Like, should it say fairy tales on it? Should my rap say fairy raps? Yeah. Uh, pause. <laughs> anyway, if I say boom, bye, bye, and a body boy head, does that mean I don't like uh, homosexuals? Does that mean I have, I'm, I'm homophobic? Absolutely not. No, my I got family members, you know, that are different sexual preferences, and and it's, it is it is no constellation. It makes it doesn't make us feel no way towards each other. Like we're telling stories, you know. We are the people who are who have been commissioned to talk about the shit you don't like sometimes, and sometimes the shit you do like, and you you get to pick what you don't like or what you do like. And that's the ill shit about rappers because we don't get to do that. We get to, whatever we do, people judge us by that. Mm -hmm. If that's what you are, then that's what you are. And that's what he said he is. And he, he can never change or she can never change. And that's not true about people, you know? So with rap, you could tell such amazing tales. We've been, we've been, we've been, we've been, we've been uh, blessed with this gift of creativity. You know, you, you blessed with the gift to we in doing an interview so you have to be objective mm -hmm. you know imagine if you just interview people that just think about this thing then you would be what they are what they think about that's you and that not, might not be true but we have the ability to now talk to people on whatever we want to talk to them about and they get and they, and they can they're gonna respond they can they can yes no mm -hmm. that's what it's about you know what I mean? That's what hip hop is about. Okay, and uh, salute the pioneers, salute Cool Herc, Bambada, salute the family, salute the big homies. You know what I mean? And do you remember the first time that you went on an overseas tour uh, to Europe, and and your reaction when you saw uh, like so many people from like a background that is such different, like rapping your lyrics? How how did that feel? That's crazy, man. <laughs> it's crazy. It's still crazy. You know what I mean? Like the first time going to Europe, the first time leaving from Brooklyn and, and seeing people that really 
you know, you can have a conversation with these people because they, they can identify with you. And not only identify with you, but they, they, I know what you're talking about. Like, it's spooky, man. It's, it's, it's surreal. And it's beautiful. You know, it's beautiful. And I, and I still, to this day, um, I still pay attention to that and I, and I hold that close to my heart because it always inspires me to know that, you know, one of my good friends said language uh, is, 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 is so vast. Then he said idioma, right? Big up my homie Louis Skaggs. Um, we talk about idioma. We talk about language that we don't even know. How do we even communicate with each other? You know, so man, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful experience, man. It's awesome, man. <laughs> you know. And uh, as a while before you you mentioned, like shout out to the pioneers, Gil uh, Herg Bambada, and uh, and all of them. And uh, what do you think nowadays? Some people gonna be mad. I said piece of Bambada because a lot of people ain't ain't fucking with Bambada right now. But that's another story. I'm saluting the pioneers, period, point blank. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, today, there's so much new hip hop See. that young uh, young fans don't even have time to go back to the roots. This is true. And also young artists don't have time to go to the roots. This so how true. important is uh, for for artists like in, in their 20s or up and coming artists, uh, teenagers, uh, uh, ETC, to know the roots and like know uh, who was here before them? I, I'm, I'm, I'm an old school cat, man. I'm like, I like I'm, I'm, the, I'm in the middle of the old guys and the young guy. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna always say it's it's extremely important to know where you came from to know where you're going. Um, what I will admit is that when you when you where you at and you're moving forward, you're you're creating a new history. Um, now the old guys know what I'm talking about because the history uh, renews itself every 2,500 years. That's for the gods out there, peace of the gods and earth. History news every 2,500 years. So if we sitting here telling these new guys, these new guys, that they have to be like this, then then we're not good teachers. You know what I mean? Like okay, A B C D E F G one two three one two one two. All right, we got that part. Now now they are going to go out there in the world and do other stuff. Now I ain't gonna front. At first, it's abrasive. Cause it's like, yo, it keeps it the culture, the old the culture, yo, bring it back to the old school rap. What rap taught us is to be independent. So there's no going back to the lessons. The lessons are evolving and they're growing. It's like it's like planting a, a seed and the tree grow. You're like, go back to the seed. The tree is now bearing fruit. So whatever fruit was coming from that tree, this is what we get from the hip hop generation right now. So I love, I love. What these, what these, what these guys and these females are doing right now, um, and I'm, and I, and I'm, and I'm getting to learn more from these guys, and I'm feeling more invigorated because other than that, it's like, yo, who wants to sit there with old books and just go, this is the only books that we have. There's new books, there's new lessons, there's new clothes, there's new styles, there's new, there's new slang, there's new swag, and I love it, man. I love it, man. This is what hip hop gave us, man. You know what I mean? Salute the pioneers. Right. So, so which artists of the new school, like the new wave, with totally different sound from uh, what you did, are the best for you? Uh, which one uh, or which ones uh, were like most inspirational for you? Like you listened it, wow, he did it like this, he wrote the flow like this, and yo, I don't have no best man, but I can say uh, um, it's a, it's some young brothers out there called Loaf Music. Um, these guys. Uh, remind me of how I was 20 years ago. You feel me? Um, and it's 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 super inspirational. The way these guys give it up, the way they coming on, and the way they the, like some of these like these guys. I'm talking about these guys are doing their own T-shirts. They're doing their own merchandise. They're doing they're, they're dancing in their videos. They're 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 their own hype men. Um, when I see that. I know that this it's not dead. You know, I know that there are there are there are there are some young people out here that have ideas in their head that they can't wait to share with us. And I, I know 
you know, salute to all the people out there that's doing that. My son is a, is a producer. Um, my, 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 my oldest son, Genesis, is, is a producer. He makes beats, he also rhymes. My youngest son is, is, is delving into um, clothing line. Like, just seeing what these, what these young people have, what, they, what, what the ideas that they have is, is, is great, you know? We don't want to get old and just be decrepit and just die and be like, all you remember from me is in 1995, you know? They're keeping it alive. They are. And, and, and give, them, give them a couple of years and then they're going to do their history and then they're going to start bringing um, what we know, what we grew up off of, into the fold the same way we did. So I look forward to it, man, you know? Salute, salute all the young guys out there, young females out there getting y'all money, creating new stuff. It's, a, it's, it's too numerous to mention. And I ain't, I ain't saying no names on my interview, so you already know what time it is. <laughs> uh, okay, and uh, we, were, we were planning to go to the Sean P. Mural today, but we haven't had a chance yet. But yes. uh, how would you say, like, uh, like regarding Sean P.'s legacy, uh, how does it look right now? Do you feel that people remember him and like he's honored well? Uh, and, and and you know and and the young people, the young listeners, are they aware of what he uh, what he brought to the table and, and so forth? I think that Sean Price, uh, he will continuously be um, someone on our timeline who will influence the old and the young. Um, it's a lot of young people who don't know about Sean Price, but he's he's going to uh, at some point. In, in, infect all of these people, the young and the old, and, and we're going to spread the gospel on that. So, same thing with the tree, man. It's like the Timberland tree. You know, you plant the seed and the tree grow. You know, the tree can give shade or can give fruit mm -hmm. to the youth. I think that Sean Price is one of the baddest motherfuckers that ever walked the planet, Earth. You know, um, what I learned from him. It's amazing. He one of the greats, man. Period, point blank. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. And uh, how does it look with the, the with the boot camp album that, that you're planning to do? Is it still in the works? I grew up with Sean Price. Before, before rap, you know? before rap. Mm. So my story is you know it's about it's about survival. Boot camp click album. I hope inshallah alhamdulillah we could do this album. If we do this album it'll be beautiful for the people. The people need this. Mm -hmm. If we don't, so be it. Smith and Wesson has an album they're working on right now. And um, this is what it's about. It's about continuing what we learned while we walk these fucking blocks. Mm -hmm. Because some niggas ain't here, you know? Some niggas is not here, and it's our fucking responsibility to do this shit, whether people like it or fucking not. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sean Price, forever, man. Forever, man. Forever, man. Word is bond. I heard, I heard from a wise man told me, tears is how you clean the windows of your mind. So don't mind my tears. When I speak about Sean Price, it's very intense for me. I love him and I miss him so much. But I know I got a lot of work to do. And I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking, I'm looking forward to enjoying more of these days until I meet my brother, you know? So thank you guys for doing this shit. Word. My people in Poland, my people in Warsaw. PNC is a lifestyle. That's when you dedicate yourself to your family. That's when you know what time it is. Regardless of who or what, you use rap 
as a tool or as a bridge to communicate with folks who never spoke to before in your life. Let's use this thing that was given to us. You know, let's remember, let's remember the ones that died. Let's remember the ones that live. Let's do what's required of us. And let's get busy with this shit. That's the message I got for you. I love y'all. Smith and Wesson soon come, you know. Soon come. A L L. You know them letters? The all. Salute. Thanks so much. It's hard talking about Sean, bro.